In this video, we're going to look at utility maximization when we have a rationing constraint. Here is the consumer's utility function. It is a function of two goods, good X and good Y. Here's the consumer's budget constraint. The consumer has $20 of income to spend on good X, which is priced at $2 each, and good Y, which is priced at $1 each. Good X is rationed. The maximum consumption of good X is six units, so the consumer is not allowed to buy more than six units of good X. So first thing we're going to do is going to get the marginal utility of good X. I'm going to take the partial derivative of this utility function with respect to X. The exponent on the X term comes down in front, and then we subtract one from that exponent. We don't have to do anything with the Y term. And this will simplify down to the following. 0 0.8 minus 1 is minus 0 0.2 for the exponent. And the marginal utility of good y, take the exponent on the y term, bring that down in front, subtract 1 from that exponent on the y term, and that will simplify down to the following. So the 0 0.2 minus 1 leaves us with y raised to the minus 0 0.8 power. Don't have to do anything with the x term. We set up our utility maximizing condition, where the marginal utility of good x divided by the marginal utility of good y equals the price of good x divided by the price of good y. This is the same thing as saying as the, the marginal rate of substitution equals the ratio of the prices. So making our substitution here for the marginal utility of good x and making our substitution in for the marginal utility of good y and plugging in the respective prices, $2 for good x, $1 for good y. We're going to simplify this and solve it for y. 0 0.8 divided by 0 0.2 is where this 4 is coming from. And then just 2 divided by 1 is just 2. And we're going to move some of these exponent terms around. We're going to take this x to the minus 0 0.2 and move it into the denominator. In that case, x will now be raised to the 0 0.2 in the denominator. And likewise, this y to the minus 0 0.8, we're going to move that into the numerator. And that will then make that exponent positive. We're going to sum these exponents up on the y and x terms. And now dividing through by 4, 2 divided by 4 is where this 1 half is coming from. And then multiplying through by x, we have y equals 1 half x. We're going to take this y equals 1 half x and we're going to plug it into our budget constraint over here. I'll do that on the next slide. Alright, so two equations, two unknowns. We're going to plug this 1 half x in for y in the budget constraint. And now solving for x, dividing through by 2.5, x equals 8. And we're going to take this 8 and we're going to plug it back into this equation up here. And we see that y equals 4. However, you might have noticed we have a problem. We have uh, the ration constraint is binding here. So the consumer is not allowed to buy more than 6 units of good x. And here we, are, we have a value of 8. So the ration constraint is binding. In that case, the consumer will only be able to buy six units of good X. So we're going to plug this six into the budget constraint. Where we have X, we're going to replace that with six, the maximum allowable units of good X. And in this case, the consumer will buy eight units of good Y. So the consumer spends $12 on good X, buying six units at $2 each. And the consumer spends $8 on good Y, buying eight units at $1 each. And this exhausts the consumer's $20 of income. Let's look at this graphically. The red line is the budget constraint. And the budget constraint, just solving it for Y, is Y equals 20 minus 2X. The blue line is the indifference curve without rationing. So the blue line is the indifference curve without rationing. Uh, without rationing, consumer by 8 units of good X and 4 units of good Y, giving the consumer a utility of 6.96 units. I just plug these values into the utility function and simplify to get this 6.96. And to get the equation in order for me to graph this uh, indifference curve at u equals 6.96, I needed to uh, solve the utility function for y. So raising both sides to the power of 5 to get rid of this 0 0.2 here. This equation then is what explains this blue indifference curve. And you can see here that the, the tangency here is where x equals 8 and y equals 4. 
Let's get the green line. The green line is indifference curve when we have rationing. In this case, the consumer is on a lower indifference curve, getting less utility. So the utility where x equals 6 and y equals 8 is 6.36. So to get the equation for me to graph this uh, green indifference curve, you know, same idea as before, take the utility function, solve it for y, what's the level of utility here at x equals 6 and y equals 8. I have it right there, it's 6.36, but everything here is raised to the power of 5, and we get this equation then explaining the red, or sorry, the green indifference curve. And you can see here the consumer is going to be at this point right here, getting 8 units of good Y and 6 units of good X. Okay, I'll stop here.